Hi, my name is Ellen Sachs. I'm a chaired professor of law, psychology, and the psychiatry and the behavioral sciences at the University of Southern California, Gould School of Law. I'm an adjunct professor of psychiatry at the UCSD Medical School and I'm the faculty of the New Center for Psychoanalysis. I'm also a woman with chronic schizophrenia. I first fell ill in the late 70s and I was given a quote, very poor and a quote, grave prognosis. In other words, I was expected to be unable to live independently, let alone to work, uh, but that hasn't turned out to be my life. And I think there are three reasons why. First, excellent treatment, both psychopharmacology and psychotherapy. Second, wonderfully supportive friends and family. Um, and third, uh, a workplace that is both very intellectually stimulating and very accommodating. The pharmacologic bit has been key. To speak in kind of rough terms, when I was in Oxford, England, when I first became ill and was psychotic, I was on no medication at all, and I think I was psychotic about 80% of the time. New Haven, Connecticut, I was on the typical antipsychotics, the old antipsychotics, and I was psychotic probably about 30% of the time, and now on the atypical antipsychotics here in LA, I'm psychotic only three or 4% of the time. So while meds have been essential for me and now work very well, not everyone with schizophrenia benefits from medication or benefits enough. Because psychosis is so painful and debilitating, it's important to have other interventions in our armamentarium. Uh, deep brain stimulation, what I'm going to call DBS, holds some promise, and if it can be established through studies to help people with schizophrenia, especially those with treatment-resistant schizophrenia, it will be an enormous advance. I'd like now to introduce Dr. Judith Galt, who will talk about the science around DBS, and after that I will return to talk about ethical issues around DBS for schizophrenia. Hello, this is Judy Galt a schizophrenia researcher from the University of Colorado, Denver, Departments of Neurosurgery and Psychiatry, speaking to you about our manuscript entitled Approaches to Neuromodulation for Schizophrenia. This manuscript was inspired by both the observation that patients with schizophrenia have many unmet needs and the overall success of DBS in treating movement disorders like Parkinson's disease and essential tremor. The goal is to consider DBS for the treatment of symptoms of schizophrenia. We consider established findings in schizophrenia research that consistently converge to implicate the striatum and demonstrate that like Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia represents a circuit disorder that is amenable to modulation with DBS. Possible brain regions to target with DBS are identified with the goal of balancing dopaminergic tone and in the striatum. Suggested targets include regions within the striatum, regions that are input structures to the striatum, and regions that are output structures of the striatum. Additional regions to target are considered to treat cognitive deficits and negative symptoms. There are several potential advantages to DBS treatment that may complement the action of antipsychotic medication. DBS provides a unique therapeutic mechanism that may benefit otherwise treatment refractory patients. DBS may reduce relapse rates in otherwise responsive patients, and DBS may treat cognitive impairment and reduce negative symptoms. We conclude that there is sufficient evidence supporting some of these targets in clinical trials, and we discuss the current state of three clinical trials. We invited Dr. Ellen Sachs to contribute to the ethics section of this manuscript to share her expertise in mental health law, policy, and ethics, as well as her perspective as a consumer and a patient advocate. Thank you for your interest in DBS for schizophrenia. So when we think about the ethics of DBS for schizophrenia research, the best source is the Belmont Report. Interventions must properly meet principles of beneficence, respect for persons, and justice. In terms of beneficence, DBS for schizophrenia does pose some risks, for example, of infection, but it also offers a potential for significant benefit to patients. 
Respect for purpose persons is embodied in the principles of informed consent. This involves the right of people to make autonomous decisions and the protection of those with diminished capacity. Instruments to measure capacity are fairly well developed, and it turns out that many people with schizophrenia retain capacity. For example, on the MacArthur instruments on their appreciation scale, around 25% of patients with schizophrenia score impaired. While on the California scale of appreciation, the CSA, an instrument that I and colleagues at UCSD Medical School developed, um, the range is around 7% to 12%. Note though that MacArthur was looking at uh, inpatients with schizophrenia while uh, the California scale of appreciation was looking at outpatients. So many people, including those with the most serious disease, namely schizophrenia, retain capacity to consent for interventions like DBS for schizophrenia. The third principle, justice, includes equity and fairness in health care, and new procedures should be available to all equally, and so with DBS for schizophrenia. In our view, studying people with DBS for schizophrenia is not only acceptable, but has the potential of improving the lives of people with schizophrenia who aren't responsive to conventional treatment. Having lived myself both without effective treatment and with effective treatment, I could say that the stakes are high, both for individual well-being and for society. Thank you for your interest in our paper.